Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13.2 beta three has been out for a few days. I've been using it primarily on my iPhone 11 pro max, and I also have it here on the iPhone eight plus. So I wanted to talk about how it's been for me. Then we'll talk about how it's been for you based off the YouTube community poll. And then we'll also take a look at the poll and then some of your comments. If you want to jump to any one of those sections, I always list the time codes on these longer videos in the description below. Now, the first thing is it's been mostly good for me overall. Scrolling has been smooth. I haven't had really any stutters or anything like that. I've not really had any app crashes and typically I use dark mode here, but I've been switching back and forth. I have it set to automatic, but typically I really have no issues. I have had a couple few little things here and there, but no app crashes, no issues switching apps or anything like that. And a good thing for me specifically is mail is working fine. I know some people are still having an issue, but for me, mail has been great. It's finally working properly. And I think 13.2 really irons out most of the bugs for that. Also, HomeKit is one of the issues that I'm actually having. So you'll see that my office light panels are not responding. The status is not updating properly for some of my devices. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And I've noticed that some of you have said the same thing. Now also RAM management overall is actually pretty good. And that's the apps when they close in the background, even though they're open here. RAM management in general has been good with the exception of the YouTube app. YouTube keeps reloading itself over and over. And I don't know if that's because YouTube needs to update the app or it's something that Apple changed with iOS 13 to not allow them to use as much Ram. I'm not sure what the issue is, but that seems to be an issue still as far as the YouTube apps. All the other apps really don't load that much. Maybe once in a while Twitter will, but I really have not had many issues. So like I said, scrolling, performance, and everything has been quite good for me. I did have an issue where Bluetooth wasn't connecting to my car again. That's supposedly fixed with iOS 13.1.3, and maybe they just haven't pushed it to the betas yet of 13.2. I would imagine they have, but they haven't mentioned it. So hopefully that's fixed. Occasionally it won't connect to my car. Now battery life is okay. If I go down to battery here, this phone's newer, so it should have hundred percent battery health. But if, if we go down here, you'll see this was my daily usage today. This was four hours and 28 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 52 minutes of screen off time. And that means four hours and 28 minutes, which is actually pretty good because I only use 50% of my battery. So in that time, I guess eight or nine hours of screen on time. If I was to let it go all day long, you'll see Twitter used almost a little over a quarter of my battery along with mail. So it's working okay for me. I'm not really having any issues. I can't complain too much. It seems to be okay. Prior to this though, it wasn't so great. And the interesting thing is based off the YouTube community poll and things you said, you're actually having far better battery than before in the previous betas and the public release. A few of you are saying that battery life is terrible, but the majority of you so far are saying that it's actually quite good on all your devices. So it doesn't matter what you're using. It could be an older phone, could be a newer phone. You've been saying that performance is really, really good on 13.2 as well as battery life in general. So it doesn't matter the device, it should be good for you either way. Now, some of you are saying you're having issues with Safari, whether it's just not working altogether, you're having issues opening tabs and things like that. It seems to be working really fast for me. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. All of the 3D press and pop or peek and pops working, no matter what device I'm on, it seems to work just fine. So overall, I think it's good as far as Safari, except for a few people. So I don't know, maybe you need to reboot the device. I'm curious if you're having that issue afterwards. Also, some of you are saying apps are freezing and locking up. I don't know the specific apps as you didn't mention many of them, but whether it's music or something else, I'd be curious to know if those are specific apps. A few of you did mention Facebook's apps. And so Facebook, Instagram, since they own them and WhatsApp, maybe they're going to have issues. They need to update those apps. And then, like I mentioned before with HomeKit, some people are having issues with HomeKit as well. I thankfully am only having it with a couple of my devices, but for some reason, it's just not working properly sometimes. But let's take a look at the YouTube community poll.
Now, the YouTube community poll has had tremendous response, so I really appreciate that. This was kind of last minute. I wasn't really planning to do a follow-up on this because there's a lot of different things this week, but many of you were asking for it, so I figured I'd, I'd make a follow-up. And as you can see, the poll was, was launched about four hours ago, and 5,000 of you responded. So I really appreciate that. That gives us some great information. So you'll see 23% of you said it's been great. 4% say it's terrible. 10% says, okay, but some bugs over half of you at 55% are using 13.1.3 or older and 9% are using Android. It's really interesting to see these based on what we had previously with the last poll. You'll see out of 18,000 votes, it, the, the terrible rates actually a percent higher, but almost nine to th to 11% of you are on Android and still responding. So I really appreciate that. Now I have read all of these different comments. There's 104 of them and I've read all of them up till the last few minutes since I made this video or started to make this video. So I'm going to go through some of these and see how it's been for you. So you'll see it says it's been pretty good on my 10R. It's been running flawlessly on my 11 Pro Max. Great performance and battery life. It hasn't been great, borderline terrible, can't wait for the official release, never again, not until iOS 14. You're going to have to wait until, I suppose, June or September, I guess, with that. It's been way better for me on my iPhone 6S, because all of the bugs I've had before have been fixed, but when my phone died, it took an unfortunate long time to boot up, which was weird, as the even older version of iOS 13, I haven't experienced this issue. I have a 10s max and i had to downgrade to 10.1.3 i think you mean 13.1.3 because it was too buggy but but still have the issue with the location arrow on my screen even do i have no apps open even though i have no apps open i think is what you're trying to say at this point i would just ignore the arrow i don't think it's really affecting battery too much safari is completely broken for i can't use it for even basic search at the minute on top of safari being broken completely or completely broken and not able to perform basic search my battery is also draining unreasonably quickly i would try a reboot like i mentioned before i'm not exactly sure if that's the issue or not good on my iphone 8 battery life can be improved but other than that it's worth upgrading also quick question is 95 percent battery health good after six months thanks for the compliment there uh yes 95 percent battery life is about normal after six months apple says 80 percent after two years is what they expect so anything that's 80 percent or better after two years is the expected battery health depletion rate iPhone 11 Pro freezes for a couple seconds when I open the mail app or when I'm on the phone and wake the screen up. Also, when haptic press messages on the home screen, it was frozen on three contacts, including myself, after downgrading to 13.1.3 and even coming back to beta 3, now it's just no contacts. Battery seems okay, everything else is fine. I have a 6S, a terrible battery life with so much bugs and crashes every now and then, no stability in performance. I hope they fix though. And I've been asking a lot about how I can downgrade to 13.1.3. You need iTunes or Finder now in Mac OS Catalina. So iTunes on, an, on Windows or Mac or the Finder if you're on the newer version of Catalina, then you can downgrade. 11 Pro Max and 2018 iPad Pro. No issues at all. Almost nine hours of screen on time. Still having an issue where my bars disappear, return, and data lo no longer works. AT&T and Apple both try to resolve it, but it either fa it's either faulty or something with dual SIM is causing it, maybe. This beta has been going great on my iPhone XR, and I hope that it works the same when I get my iPhone 11 Max. Got an iPhone 6S Plus, been restarting on me, but other than that, it's been good. When is it going official? I have a weird bug in the photo app where it doesn't let me zoom out on how the photos are displayed and forces a full screen per image display mode. Anyone else encountering this? I haven't encountered that, but I expect this full version to be out before the end of the month or right at the end of the month. There's some rumors about some new products coming out and the the new Beats headphones that Apple actually announced that are coming out soon. Some reviewers got their hands on some, but those are coming out. They require 13.2 really to operate properly because they're noise canceling and there's actually a toggle under the, the volume app for that noise canceling. Feels great on my 11 Pro Max, having a great experience with it. Doesn't even feel like a beta. A lot better than previous beta. Fast, good battery life, 10S Max. Thanks. Appreciate the compliment. My 10R is running beautifully. 
It's been very stable on my 8 Plus. I see noticeable battery life improvements over Beta 2. It's been alright on my iPhone XS Max. I still get that issue with sending video or picture messages to people with Android devices. All correct settings on, but still won't work. I'm not sure what you mean by that. As long as you have MMS turned on, it should go through. You may want to try turning iMessage off and on. Maybe that will fix it, but in general it should work. Battery life on my iPhone 7 Plus is terrible. My phone freezes when in use. Do not recommend this beta upgrade. I think the only issue I've noticed is iCloud not syncing SMS messages on my Mac, but other than that, I've had no issues to mention. Everything is smooth. You may want to check your settings. Normally, I, I actually have to turn that off and on. It depends if you swap phones or update, but there's a setting to send those messages to the Mac, so make sure that's turned on in your settings. Here's another person with bad battery life on a 7 Plus. It says, battery life on my iPhone 7 Plus is terrible, and it's freezing a lot when I use Apple Music with my first generation AirPods. I'm running this software on my red iPhone XR. Overall, the performance is very snappy and quick. I'm very pleased with the overall performance of the update. It also seems to fix some of the cellular and Wi-Fi problems I was having. The one complaint I do have, however, is that the battery seems to be a little bit worse than before, but that is to be expected of a beta. Thanks for your videos. They really help. I look forward to the next. Thanks a lot. Performance and battery life is way better than iOS 13.1.3 on my iPhone 7 Plus. Just some bugs here and there, like when scrolling on a white wallpaper, the stutter is much more visible. But overall, all very stable. On my 7 Plus, all good. On my iPad Pro 10.5, I have issues with the touch display. Lots of failed inputs. I still have that issue on public releases too, so hopefully Apple fixes that soon. It's really made my iPad Pro less enjoyable to use and that was my favorite device that's it for ios 13.2 beta 3 i would expect a beta either this week and maybe a final the following week we don't really know for sure but i would expect something along those lines as far as anything else maybe a new macbook at the end of the month or hopefully that mac pro gets some pricing i'm just curious what crazy price you can spec that thing out to. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.